We started out this adoption journey in the idea that we wanted a larger family and we wanted to provide a family for someone who didn't have one. We thought we would start out with adopting one child through uh, the foster care system or uh, in the U.S. and it has turned into two kids from Haiti that we would not have like planned this six and a half year journey and roadblocks along the way. If we would have scripted it out, it would not have been like that whatsoever, but. Our children weren't even born when we started the journey. Yeah. Like they were not even here. So clearly there was a reason why we had waited so long. The country of Haiti requires a 10 day visit with the children just to make sure it's a good fit, just to, you know, continue the process. So we get to the end of June and we're ready to leave. And at 10.30 p.m. the night before, um, we get a call from our agency. They call and say, well, there's one road from Port-au-Prince to where your orphanage is, and riots broke out on that road today. However, you're eight hours from leaving the country. If you wanna go, we will support you in going. So we're climbing up through the mountains and we start to see some burning tires in the road and then a few rocks in the road. We go along and the roadblocks just kind of keep getting bigger and more rocks and we're driving around them in a four wheel drive vehicle or over them. And at the next one, there is a box truck with flat tires across the bridge. Um, but there's also trees piled up higher than the box truck on each side of it. Um, and it's not moving anytime soon. Some of those people had been there waiting since the day before. We're totally reliant on our driver and our translator at this time. The driver gets back in, says something in Haitian Creole to our translator who says, two and a half hours into our drive now, we're about 30 minutes away and says, it looks like we're gonna have to turn around. There's like no way that we can get through this river or over this bridge. And we don't wanna be here when the protesters actually come back out. And I remember probably feeling the most helpless I ever have in my life and realizing that I was somewhere where I had no resources. Um, what I had was um, Stephanie there with me and we felt like we brought our five loaves and two fish, like this is what you wanted us to do, Lord. Um, and now we can't do any more, it's up to you. So I remember specifically praying probably like I never have before. And it was, there were no compromises in it or anything. Um, it was just, please move this truck um, in these trees. You're, you're the only one that can do it in a timeline um, that is going to get us to see our kids. Um, and so I sat there and bowed my head and prayed for a while. And then the driver hops back in the truck and starts the car up and starts to move. And we do kind of a U-turn in the road, spun around and took off on what he said was a, a motorcycle path and a walking path and for about 20 minutes. And then we were able to pop back out onto the road on the other side of this bridge where um, we were. So he didn't move it in that moment, but he, he got it accomplished when we couldn't do anything um, ourselves. We have seemed very much like a family pretty instantly. Um, Franz got on the plane and told Sefi, you're Sefi Lynn now. Like they knew. Knowing that Jesus is alive is just feeling his presence when it's really needed. And I think we've all had those moments where we pray for something or we feel like we need guidance and we don't necessarily feel like there's an answer or an immediate answer um, on our terms. And I am a very, I don't know, just an anxious, worrying person. And I have felt, I would say, the most comfort in the times of the most uncertainty throughout our um, adoption journey. The idea of Jesus being alive and what difference that makes in my life, I, I think it used to mean is that I thought God was there, um, there all the time, and so on, and just kind of watching over me, trying to do my best. And now I feel like I'm at a point where it's me bringing whatever I can and trying to do my best and not getting angry about the result as much. Um, 
I used to really get angry like in regards to like, oh, why couldn't I do this? Why didn't I get this done correctly? Like, um, and now I at least hope and think that I am approaching things with a little bit more of the idea of, okay, this is what I thought God wanted. Maybe he doesn't want it or right now. Um, but I, I did what I thought he wanted me to do. And then now to see them with Stephanie or with Emma, realize again, like I can do what I can do, but um, inviting God into those situations makes a world of difference in regards to how I approach it and how I'm okay with the result because he has a lot different perspective on the, especially the long term than I do. And I think just knowing like, we can do hard things and that God will be there when we're in the thick of it and we will feel his presence and the things that often feel hard aren't necessarily as hard as we're making them out to be. You know, like there are gonna be difficult things that happen on a daily basis, but we can get through those things together and with God and when we really need him and we feel really stuck, like we'll feel it, we'll know it, he'll be there.